Okay, so I said I would make a video and upload it um, going over our packet, our review packet for our benchmark. And so here it is. All right, let's start at the beginning. Matter and energy, physical properties of matter. This is the area that talks about how you can describe a product or describe an item. You can take its mass. That means measure it using a balance in grams. You can use it on a, a triple beam or a double pan balance. Next, you can test test its magnetism, whether or not the actual object is attracted to a magnet. Next is its physical state. You can describe if it's solid, liquid, or gas, the relative density, whether matter sinks or floats in water. Its solubility, you can, you can uh, test the item to see if it's going to actually dissolve in water. So if I have a stapler, is that going to dissolve in water? No, it's not, right? At least I hope not. All right. Thermal conductivity, um, I can take that same stapler. If I put heat to it, is it gonna get hot in my hand or is it gonna stay cool? And last, electrical conductivity. Again, if I put some wires up to that and the battery, is electricity gonna flow through it? Is electrons, are they gonna flow through it? Okay, so now let's get to relative density. That means sinks or floats, right? So less dense means it floats, more dense means it sinks. So if you have a cup of water and you have a ping pong ball, think of a little plastic ping pong ball, is it going to sink or float? It's going to float. What about a paper clip? Sink. Okay, so the heavier something is, the more dense it is, the more likely it's going to sink. Now, I don't want to say heavier because if you have wood, we all know that a piece of wood floats and wood can be very, very heavy depending on how big a piece of it is. A lot of boats are made out of wood or used to be anyway. And we all know boats float until they don't. All right, so now let's talk about our measurement tools. In order to measure things, a triple beam balance and a double pan balance, they measure mass. If you want to measure volume, you need a graduated cylinder. That's that glass cup, okay? And if you want to weigh yourself, you just get on a scale. All right, let's talk about constant properties of water. This is our boiling, freezing, and melting points. Boiling points 100 degrees, freezing and melting, both at zero. Remember, there's always two that are the same. That's freezing and melting. Ice cube falls out of the freezer, hits the ground. Well, it was frozen. The ice cube was frozen in the freezer, so it's zero degrees. And now it's on the ground, and it's starting to melt. So it starts at zero, and then it starts to rise until it's completely melted. All right, now, changes in matter. So, here's the process, condensation. Condensation is when a gas turns back to a liquid. So, and that's that happens because it cooled off. So, you're in the hot shower, right? All the steam is being made. It gets on the mirror. The mirror is cold. So, it cools that steam off, and that steam turns into little droplets of water, right? And that's because it was cooling. Then, let's look at evaporation. That's when a liquid turns to a gas. And you only do that by heating it up. Okay? Um, freezing. Turning a liquid, turning it into a solid. And that's by cooling. Okay? You have to put that water in that freezer for it to freeze. And then melting is you take a solid and it turns into a liquid. And that's because of heating. So, those are your causes. Next, let's talk about mixtures and solutions. Okay? Mixture is a combination of two or more substances, right? Substances maintain their physical properties. An example are iron fillings and sand. You can also say Skittles. And you can talk, um, there's a jar of uh, Hershey Kisses on my, on my desk. They're all in different colored wrappers. So that would be a mixture. I can separate them by the colors. Next, a solution is still a, also a combination of two or more substances. See, they're, they're the same right there. But then you get into physical properties of substances may change. And we all know you can't easily separate solutions. So the example would be salt and water. So the salt dissolves into the water. Sugar dissolves into the water. Kool-Aid powder dissolves into the water. Those are, those are different things. Now, sand. Does sand dissolve in water? Think of a beach. No, it doesn't. Your feet are on the sand and you're in the water so 
your toes are gripping the sand. That sand's not dissolving in the water, so you wouldn't have anything to stand on. All right, turn the page. Force, motion, and energy. Let's talk about the behavior of light. Reflection is bouncing back of light waves off of a surface, such as mirrors, tinted windows, shiny surfaces. Anything you think you can see your face in, that's reflection. Okay? And then you've got refraction, which is bending of light waves as they pass through one medium to another. That just means the light's coming at a straight line. It hits something and then it bends. And that you see that in cameras, eyeglasses, so the glasses on your face, telescopes, and through water. We all know that light refracts through water. Okay. So anytime you look through a camera and it's making something bigger or a lens or because it's got telescopes too, if it makes an image seem bigger, it's always refraction. All right, uh, let's talk about uses of energy. Melts, here's your acronym, melts. All right, mechanical, which is turbines, dams, electrical, computers, lamps, light, solar panels, Thermal, ovens and melting, and sound, hearing mes messages, okay? Uses of energy. These are your five types of energy. All right, mechanical. Remember, you're moving. You're doing something. Electrical is electrical. It's electricity. Light is light from the, either the sun or a light bulb. Thermal is heat, remember? And sound, what you hear. All right, force and motion. Friction is a force that works against motion. So if I roll a pencil across a carpet and the other one across the hard floor in the classroom, which one's going to go further? The one on the, the floor, right? Not the carpet. The carpet's going to slow it down. That's friction. All right. Gravity is the force that pulls the object toward one another. So I drop a I let, I'm holding a ball up in the air. I let go of it. It's going to fall because gravity is going to pull it down. All right. Then force is a push or pull. I'm pushing this. That's force. And motion is just movement. Just movement. Okay. Which would go with mechanical, right? All right. Circuits. You've got open circuits. There's a break there. So the light bulb's going to work. No. And a closed circuit. It's a complete path. Remember, if you see any circuits on your test, Follow the path. Follow the path. All right. Forms of energy. We already talked about it. Melts, right? Mechanical, electrical, light, thermal, sound. Write that down in your test booklet. You get to a question that talks about energy. Write down melts. All right. Designing an experiment that tests the force, the effect of force on an object. Um, so a spring scale. Use a spring scale to drag a block on three different surfaces to determine if different surfaces affect the amount of force needed to move the block. Example two is use a spring launcher to launch four balls with different masses but the same volume. So measure the height each sphere reaches to determine its mass affects the distance the ball will travel when launched. All right, so on your spring scale, you can hook up an object to it and try to, try to drag it along and see how much force it takes. All right, earth and space, alternative energy resources. This is another um, mnemonic device that we came up with. Silly Baxter wears green hats, okay? So your alternative energy means you, alternative and renewable mean the same, okay? You can use it, they don't mean the same, but, okay, alternative is, an alternative to using non-renewable. Got it? So you've got your non-renewables, like your coal, oil, and natural gas. But then those are, we're using all those up as humans. So we need to go find alternative ways. There comes, and that's why they're called renewable, because we can use them over and over and over. Solar, that's just from the sun. Sun's always going to be there. Thank you, Mr. Sun. Wind, wind's always going to blow. So we'll always have wind. Geothermal. The earth is so hot and it always produces more heat. And we get heat from the earth to make uh, to make energy. And then biofuels, that's your corn and your other organisms that, um, like sugar, also the uh, other organisms that scientists use and turn into energy. And then, of course, hydroelectric. Hydro means water. All right, fossil fuels. 
coal, oil, or petroleum, same thing, or natural gas. Three fossil fuels, coal, oil, natural gas. They're formed from dead organisms that underwent heat and pressure and millions of years. That's it. So you have dead things. They're getting pressure and heat for millions of years, and then you get fossil fuels. All right. Renewable resources. Air, plants, animals, water. That gives us our wind. That gives us our bio. That gives us our bio. And that gives us our hydro. I guess sun should be on here too. So I'm going to put sun. And I'm going to put heat from the earth too. Because that would be our geo. All right. Let's talk about... <clears throat> WED. Causes of WED. Well, first of all, what is WED? Weathering, erosion, and deposition. So you've got three W's. Wind, water, waves, and then I is for ice. Now, what does that mean? That means that a, a big giant rock built into the ground or natural from the earth can be cut up in pieces by wind, by water, so rain, or by waves, if it's by the ocean and water crashes up on it every single day, it's going to wear it away very slowly, very slowly. But it will. It'll wear it away. And then, of course, you've got ice. And so whenever you pour ice into a, or water into a crack and then it freezes, it expands, right? The, rock, the ice gets bigger. And so then it cracks that rock in pieces. All right. Slow changes to Earth's surface. These are slow changes to Earth's surface. Weathering. So that's just breaking down of the sediments. Then erosion is when you're actually moving the sediments. And then deposition is just dropping off the sediments. So this is your W-E-D, WED. All right, next, sedimentary rock formation. Sediments are deposited in layers over time. Two, compaction presses the sediments down. Water makes sediments stick together during cementation. So you need, uh, you need the, de the WED for sure. And then you need compaction, okay, where it's just on top of each other, like this, just making layers. And then you need that water to come in and make it all stick together like cement. That's where the cementation comes from. All right. Now let's talk about cycles in space. Cycle. What happens? Day and night. Caused by Earth spinning on its axis, and it happens once every 24 hours. All right. Lunar. Caused by the moon revolving around Earth every 29 days. Remember I told you some people say 28, it's 29. Sometimes it could even be 30 days. But 28, 29, 30 days is, is always accurate. All right, tides. Those are caused by pull of gravity by the moon every 13 hours. This is where your high tides and low tides come in. And then last seasons. That's caused by the tilt of the Earth's axis and it changes every three months. Now, what happens every... Why do we have seasons? Where does the earth go? What does it do? Well, it travels around the sun. And remember, it makes one trip around the sun a year. Don't forget. Hey, I'd like to have a few more trips around the sun, please. That means I'd like to live a few more years. All right. Water cycles. First, you've got... Well, I don't say first. I mean, you can start anywhere. So let's just do this. Evaporation. You've got this water, this uh, ocean water, and it's evaporating up into the sky because the sun is heating up the water and then once the cloud um once the water comes up then it forms condensation because remember that water vapor hits cooler air which it does up in the sky because it the farther up in the sky you go the colder the air gets so it hits all that air that cold air and it starts turning into clouds then the clouds get so heavy they just can't hold anymore so then they have to release and all this rain comes down and does it have to be rain? No, it can also be snow, sleet, hail. Okay. And then it comes to the ground and see how they have these little hills. Well, then what does water do when it's on a hill? It rolls downhill and we call that a runoff. Okay. And then it goes back into the ocean and then goes back up in the sky. And so you have this constant cycle. All right. Let's look at this one. Order of planets from the sun. This is probably important to know. So please try to remember this. My very excellent mother just served us nachos. 
So just think if it's like a Tuesday at school and we have nachos, only it's not your mom serving. It's always the lunch ladies, but I don't know. It could be your mom. My very excellent mother just served us nachos. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. Okay. All right. Back page. Organisms and environments. Photosynthesis. Some of this stuff, guys, we haven't covered yet, and that's okay. It, if it's on the test, do your best. Ooh, I just made that up. If it's on the test, do your best. Okay, that's pretty cool. All right, photosynthesis. So in order for photosynthesis to even happen, you're going to have to have some carbon dioxide. You're going to have to have some water, some sunlight, and some oxygen. Actually, the oxygen is put out. So how does a leaf make oxygen? How do leaves actually help us breathe? Because they suck in the carbon dioxide that we breathe out. They suck in the water that we water the plants with. They're sucking in the sunlight that the sun gives them. And then they're giving us in return for all of that. They're giving us oxygen so we can breathe. All right, let's talk about some decomposers. They break down dead plants and animals. Examples are mold, bacteria, earthworms, and mushrooms. So an earthworm is a decomposer. Oh, yeah, that's right, because they live in the soil, and they eat all the stuff, and then remember that it goes in their body, and they process it, and then they poop it out, and then remember? So, yeah. Mm, yeah. All right. Food chains. Arrows show the flow of energy. Where the arrow goes, the energy flows. So everything starts at the sun. Then you go to the producer. Then you go to the herbivore, and then the carnivore. Because has anyone ever heard of a herbivore eating a carnivore? No, because um, producers are the little guys like the plants that just make their own food. The herbivore is just the little animal that comes along and only likes to eat grass or plants because he's weird. And then your carnivores are the meat eaters, and they're the ones that want to definitely going to eat anything else. All right, and which ones are we as humans? Carnivore. What are some weirdos? Vegetarians. I mean, herbivores. I mean, oops, I didn't say that. All right, food web vocabulary. Let's go to this. A producer makes its own food. A consumer must eat to get energy. That is you. That is us. Okay. Herbivores eat only plants. Omnivores eat plants and animals. Mm, yum, yum, yum. Carnivores eat only animals. The unique niche. That's an organism's role in an ecosystem based on how it gets its food. All right. Adaptations for survival, mimicry, color, thorns or spines, pleasant or unpleasant odor, sharp teeth, sounds, fur, camouflage. What the heck am I even talking about here, huh? This is how animals adapt so they can survive, okay? Uh, if I'm a porcupine and I'm scared, what am I going to do? I'm going to spike up my spines, my thorns, and I'm going to try to attack you with them, okay? If... Uh, Unpleasant odor. What animal gives off the worst scent? A skunk. So if I'm scared, what am I going to do? I'm going to spray. These are things that I will do as an animal to protect myself. All right. Traits and behaviors. Inherit traits. That's passed on through genes from parent to child. Examples are hair, color, spines on a cactus, shape of beak, Okay, and then learned behaviors are things learned from someone or some or from experience. Examples are animal learning tricks, a child riding a bike, a dolphin jumping through a hoop, um, you holding your spoon, you holding your fork, you learning how to write your name. Those are all learned behaviors. Inherited traits are basic instincts like learning to not learning, um, breathing, crying. Okay, those are just basic instincts. All right, insect life cycles. So for a complete metamorphosis to happen, you have the, le the egg, the larva, the pupa, and the adult. An incomplete metamorphosis is just the egg, nymph, and adult. It's missing. They're missing a stage. Okay. All right, ecosystem. That's the interaction between all the abiotic, non-living, and biotic, living things in an environment. And last our carbon dioxide oxygen cycle. Animals inhale oxygen and exhale carbon dioxide during respiration. Plants take in carbon dioxide and emit oxygen during photosynthesis. 
Okay, that's just that cycle. Draw it out. Tree, human. I breathe in oxygen. I breathe out the carbon dioxide. The tree breathes in my carbon dioxide. And because of the water and sunlight, it's going to give me back my oxygen. All right, and that's it. And this is your study packet. Please look over it. Um, you'll. If you have any questions, let me know.